dimensions? What's the size? What's the location of Pakistan? So the size of Pakistan would be equal to the two states of Texas and Ohio. Our population is 80 million, which makes us the fifth largest nation in the world. Uh, very densely populated, I yes, would say. It is. Yes, Are there large cities in Pakistan? Yes, several large cities. The, the largest, of course, is Karachi, which is the capital of uh, Pakistan. And how large would that be, sir? We, we, the Karachi has a population of about 1.3 million. Generalized. Mr. Ambassador, we Americans, of course, know that your part of the world has its troubles, too. Now, uh, and you've had trouble with India over several things. Uh, are your relations with India improving? Yes, it is improving. You, this doesn't seem to be any danger of open warfare between yourselves and India now. There's no such immediate danger. Now, uh, you, you still have the Kashmiri issue, I believe. You're, but there's still some quarrel over, over the, what happens to Kashmir, isn't there? Unfortunately, that dispute is pending for a long time. That is a religious issue, more or less, is it not, Not sir? a religious. It is a political issue because we feel that the people of Kashmir should be given the right of self-determination. The people of Kashmir are... Uh, in religious sympathy with the people of Pakistan. Though, That's I mean. right. We yeah. have cultural and religious link with the people, the majority of the people of Kashmir. And, and not with the people of India. No. Right. And then you have, uh, economically, I believe your, your rivers that flow through Pakistan rise in, in Kashmir, do they not? That's right, yes. And so you need uh, Kashmir uh, because of its hydroelectric possibilities and also because of your irrigation. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and that issue is now supposed to be decided by the United Nations, is Yes, it, it is before the United Nations. Uh, as a prediction, do you think that there is some chance of, settle, of settlement of that issue in the near we future? We sincerely hope that there is a prospect of immediate settlement, because that is really a thorn in the, our relationship with our neighboring country. And we want it to be removed so that we can both uh, neighboring countries live in peace and devote our full-time attention for the progress. Uh, here here people. in America, Mr. Ambassador, our people sometimes wonder, uh, most new nations want something from the United States. Now, uh, does Pakistan want anything from us now? No, we don't uh, in that sense. But of course, any assistance would be most welcome. But we believe that we should try to help ourselves and pull ourselves by our own bootstraps. Are you prepared to do that, sir? Oh, not only we are prepared, we have demonstrated it to the world that uh, we have done a fine and good job of trying to help ourselves. Well, the newspapers carried a picture the other day of the first shipment of burlap to this country from Pakistan, which was hailed by you, if I recall, as a major step in the, in the nation's economy. That's right. Now, what other industries do you have that can develop in Pakistan? T mostly textile in industries, then paper and pulp mills and heavy chemical industries. What do you have to sell the people of the United States? Jute, tea, skins and hides. Cotton, well, of course, uh, you won't require so much, but we do export a large quantity of our... And what do you want to buy from us? Well, we want to buy industrial machineries. You, you want to sell these farm products to us, and you want to buy our industrial machinery. That's do you want any of our so-called technical know-how? Certainly. It, it would be very valuable to us because it will help to build our own economy. And would you like to import some of our young men from the, from the technical colleges? Certainly. They would be most welcome because uh, your country has made very rapid stride in technological science. And uh, the, your know-how, as you put it, would be most valuable in helping us to develop our own industries. Would you like to import some of our capital, too? Oh, it would be most welcome, certainly. It Are there be. any particular inducements you have for American capital? Yes, we have provided adequate safeguard for any investment which you might make. We give you uh, certain guarantees, and then we provide that certain amount of profits will be free from taxation. Mm -hmm. And then we also provide guarantees so that any profits which you make in our country would be uh, able to be taken away by you freely without any restriction. How about taxes? Well, there is some tax accession up to, I think, some certain percentage of, uh, of a dividend of your capital investment will be free of tax actual for a certain number of years. Actual exemption. Actual exemption, yes. Uh, there, there is uh, no real danger of nationalization. American capital fears nationalization. Most no, we believe in free enterprise, and all our industries are free. 
uh, and private, and therefore there is no such danger at all in our in my country. As a free enterprise nation, sir, do you feel there's any threat of communism in Pakistan? No, there is no such threat. Why is that? Because we have a religious ideology, a positive religious ideology, which does not leave any vacuum for any conflicting doctrine or ideology. You now, think the communists can operate only where there is a vacuum yes, in, in any ideology? Yes, I sincerely think so. Uh -huh. Now, since you are a Muslim state, sir, how can you uh, best uh, explain to our audience uh, just what kind of government do you have? Is there separation of church and state? Is there any influence of the government by, uh, by the church? So we, you, when you said uh, Muslim state, I think you meant by that that the majority of the people of Pakistan believe in the Muslim religion. But it is a democratic country and we have a parliamentary system of government. And there is no state church or mosques. And all our mosques, which would be equivalent to your churches, are completely free. And they do not receive any state aid or assistance. Are other churches allowed to set up, shop, and, and oh, practice yes, yes. their religion? We believe that every citizen of Pakistan has a complete freedom to worship just according to his own wishes mm -hmm. and according to his own desire. And we give them every kind of assistance to do so. There what are missionary it? churches, and there are a lot of churches of all denominations. There are synagogues. There is uh, the Buddhist uh, pagodas. What, uh, what is your relation to the British Empire now? We are a member of the Commonwealth of Nations, and we are not a part of the British Empire. We are a member of the Commonwealth, which is a free and voluntary association of nations. Now, uh, we, we've had some of our problems in the Orient, and one of the things that we debate in this country is the recognition of, of uh, red, red China. Now, has your country recognized Red China? Yes, we have. By recognition, we mean that we recognize an actual fact. It does not imply that we confer our, any blessing or give our seal of approval to any system of government. Do you trade with Red China? Yes, we do. And do you trade with Soviet Russia now? Yes, yes we do. You export these uh, jute and tea and things of this sort to uh, Soviet Russia? Yes, we do. And do you maintain an active trade with India? Yes, we do. Not very active at the moment, but we do have... Uh, is that because of India's restrictions or yours? That is because of uh, India not uh, freely accepting the par value of our currency. Uh, your currency is of more value than the Indian currency? Yes, it is. That has the same basis, has it not? The currency is the same nomenclature. The same nomenclature, yes. yes. We have the rupees, and India has also the rupees. At the time of partition, which means yes. at the time when two, two countries became sovereign and independent, we, our currency had the par value. But subsequently, we proved that our economy was better. And therefore, when India devalued, we did not feel the need for devaluation. This is since 1947. Yes, we when, became, when independent. became independent. Yes, that's yes. Right. We've heard something about land reform in Pakistan, sir. Can you tell us how uh, you've affected your land reforms? Yes, we had an antiquated system of land tenure, which meant that the farmers were not the real owners of the land. The real owners were a class of landlords, and they were a sort of intermediary between the farmer and the government. And now we want to reform the system, and we have abolished the system. And under this system, the farmers will become the owners of the land, and they will pay their taxes and rents direct to government. What happened to the landlords? Oh, they will be paid some uh, nominal uh, compensation. There's a, they will there's be a settlement on them. Yes, but right. a very nominal one. Yeah. Now yes. what do they have to do, go to work? Oh, yes, they will have to earn. <laughs> They're living now. Has this been... Uh, I shall have to think out some, <coughs> some means of livelihood because I unfortunately belong to that class. <laughs> You're the dispossessed landlord class. I've not yet been dispossessed, but I think I'll be dispossessed by the end of this year. <laughs> <laughs> that has been a form of expropriation, has it? It's not exactly state? expropriation because we do not believe in expropriation. But at the same time, we feel that the landlords have made enough out of the land. And so we give them uh, some amount of compensation. Well, I gather that even though you are being dispossessed, you're in favor of the program. Well, oh, certainly, because it is a step forward. And we do feel that the farmers should become the actual owners of the land. Mm -hmm. Though it affects me adversely, but I feel that this is a progressive step which my government has taken. Yes. And uh, are more people being educated in uh, Pakistan now? Yes, yes. Well, Mr. Ambassador, as we understand what you've said tonight, you Pakistan is a very hopeful country. You welcome American capital and American technicians. 
and you expect to maintain a system of individual freedom. Thank you very much for being with us, sir.